and maybe you discover that maybe the hood's not in an optimum location, or perhaps the stack has a cap on it, and you say, well, what, what do we do now? So the, uh, the uh, point of this next session is really to talk about how do you proceed from here? What do you do, or how do you, how do you move forward in a systematic fashion that doesn't create all kinds of alarm, but gives you an opportunity to kind of determine to what is the risk and then what's the appropriate next steps to solve the problem. If there is one, there may not be a problem. So in 2002, the US EPA has facilities throughout the United States to do air quality monitoring and other factors, and monitor the water quality and different things. So in each of these labs, they have different requirements and they have different systems and different capabilities. And so they wanted to standardize the performance across the board. But at the same time, the president uh, put out a, um, uh, a requirement that all federal facilities reduce their energy use by 30%. And it turned out that one building in the EPA's portfolio used 49% of the energy for the entire portfolio of buildings across the country. So they asked us, they said, could you develop a process that would help us ensure safety but reduce energy use in these labs? And we want this process to um, be scalable and replicable to all of our facilities. So from the smallest building to the largest building, we need to have a process that the facility managers and the groups can get together and execute this process. So this is, this is the process that we developed. And we call it the Lab Safety and Energy Optimization Process. We've changed that to the Lab Energy and Safety Optimization Process called ESOP. And if you look at the steps of the process, you're going to think, Wow, that's really simple, <laughs> because it is. Um, you, of course, have to start with your planning and your assessment. So that means we have to look at what do we have, and what do we need, and what's the plan forward. And once you have that plan, then you have to, of course, get the funding for it, and then execute it. And some things are more critical than others. So if you work your plan correctly, you can add these systems over time so that at the end, you have achieved the ultimate objective of having confidence that your systems are capable of protecting your people as well as operating as efficiently as possible. And then after you achieve that task, then you have to maintain it. And you have to prevent it from degrading back to an unsafe system. So we developed this roadmap, and this is a very busy slide. But basically, if we start at the top of it, it says you start first with identification of issues and opportunities. Then you go through a remediation optimization phase, and finally you end up with safe and efficient, and then you have to sustain it. So there's three phases, phase one, phase two, phase three. First, planning assessment. Second phase, project funding the optimization of the systems, and finally, performance management. And then when we look at this on a timeline, the very first task is to determine the goals and the initiatives. What's the, what's the objectives of what you're trying to accomplish? And as we mentioned earlier, you have to have common objectives, you have to have teamwork, and you have to have a plan. So when you bring your team together, you sit down and you say, these are what we're trying to achieve. Then you go through your, what we call a rapid energy and lab safety assessment. But for other words, that's just called an audit. And during that audit, you're going to evaluate what is the condition of the systems versus what would you like them to be, and what's the risk. And from there, you can then determine PIMS, or performance improvement measures, and then there's energy conservation measures, ECMs. So those may be different, or they may be the same, uh, one being uh, equal to do the both. That task, that process, typically takes one to three months to come to the end of a process. And the reason we give this kind of a timeline is because you have to have realistic uh, expectations of how long this is going to take. Then you get into the funding. Depending on the types of issues that you identify, that funding may require a new budget cycle. It may require convincing management that these things are necessary. It may require a whole bunch of stuff. And so we figure that that process 
is easily six months to over a year in some cases. Then we move on to the next phase. So now that you have funding for the project, someone has to engineer it. And there may be changes to the systems, so they have to have specifications. Then you go through the construction, renovation, retrofits, tab, and commissioning. And at the end of that phase, that's three months to one year. So from the moment you start on this timeline to when you get to this point where the project's finished, you could have three months, a year, another year. So you could be two to two and a half years before you get to that completion. That's a typical realistic schedule. Now, some things can be increased because of uh, priorities and so forth. If you identify real safety issues or if you have available funding, you can move these things along a little bit faster. Or if you have a um, uh, upper level manager who really wants this to be a priority, they can allocate the resources and provide the leadership necessary to make it happen.